Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Trotis, Bible teacher and preacher. You have tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. There is an event circled on God's calendar in the near future. We don't know the day, we don't know the hour, only the Father knows. But this will occur when God looks at Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and he says, Son, go and get your church. Jesus then will descend from heaven and be in the atmosphere above the earth. And the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord in the clouds forever. This event, of course, is what is called the rapture. But there's a lot of misunderstanding about the rapture. And I, would, I want to try to clear some of that up today. Today I'm going to talk to you about what is the purpose of the rapture. So let's get right into that. Now, if you remember, or if you've been taught before, man is a three-part being, tripart. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. When someone is born again, their spirit is instantly made new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's very clear to see that when we are born again, our bodies don't change. Our minds don't change. But our spirit, the real us, the hidden man of the heart, the real you, the spirit man, is instantly changed and he becomes a new creation, a new species, as though it never existed before. It's the miracle of the new birth. Now we do have a soul which is our mind, will, and emotions, or what I say, our, our, our thinker, our feeler, and our decider. That needs to be renewed. And the only way it can be renewed is through the Word of God. Titus 3, 5 says, By the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the mind through the Word of God. We have to study the Word of God, read the Word of God, memorize and meditate the Word of God, and our mind will be renewed. And then we have our body, the earth suit. The body is also the temple of God. Our body is very important. It enables us to function in this world. That's why demons would love to get inside of a human body. They can have more influence. While on earth, Jesus had a body. When Jesus was crucified, his body was bruised. His body was pierced. His body was beaten. When Jesus resurrected, this body that was bruised, beaten, was resurrected and became a new body. It was changed, but it still looked like Jesus. He could do more than what he did prior. His body could appear out of thin air. He could be touched. He could eat. His disciples, when they saw Jesus in his resurrected body, they thought they had seen a ghost. Their minds were going tilt. They saw him die on that cross. They saw him beaten beyond any recognition. Yet his body looked different now. It was still him, but it was new. He was resurrected. And in Luke chapter 24, he meets them. And in verse 36, now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. And he said to them, peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marvel, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Jesus was telling them and proving to them that his body was real. It could be touched. It could be handled. He could even eat if he wanted to. With that being said, it makes us think a little bit more about what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 
Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Paul's talking about our bodies being changed. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. What does he mean by this? What is Paul saying? The dead in Christ will rise first. We know that when a believer dies in faith, Immediately his spirit is to be with the Lord. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You can rest assured if your loved ones who knew Jesus, if they were born again, who, who are walking with Christ, if they died, they are, their spirits are with Jesus right now in a place called heaven. So what is Paul talking about? The dead in Christ will rise first. What's rising? It's their bodies. That's what's rising. At the rapture, an incredible sequence occurs. First, Jesus descends from heaven in the clouds above the earth. With a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God sounds, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Oh, if you could see this. In fact, some of us may see this. There will be cemeteries where graves will suddenly burst open and bodies will come up out of the ground. The sea will give up the dead. People who died in the woods are lost. Their, their bodies will, will, will rise up and be resurrected. Now you say, well, I don't see how that could happen. What if their bodies are decayed? What if they were burned up? What if they were blown up? Their atoms and molecules are still on this earth. And at that, when that trumpet sounds, a cascading effect will occur where every atom will, will be rejoined to one another and the body will take on a new form. The body will, will come back together. The bones will come connect. The, the skin will come on them. Organs will come on them. Eyes will come on. Hair will come on there. And they will be a resurrected body. Oh, I don't believe that. Read Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. These resurrected bodies then are changed. These bodies are resurrected and they will be raptured and they will be reunited with the spirits that are with the Lord in the clouds. Then we who are alive and remain will be changed. Our bodies will be changed in a fraction of a second and this corruptible body will become incorruptible and we'll be raptured up and we'll go to be with the Lord in the clouds. We'll go up in a resurrected body. We'll have a resurrected body just like Jesus has a resurrected body. Why? Why does this happen? I don't know everything, but one thing I do know, that we will rule and reign with Jesus during the millennial reign. We need a resurrected body. We need a body like Jesus has. We need this body to function during this millennial kingdom. This makes more sense now when you ask, what's the purpose of the rapture? Look back at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Our bodies right now are corruptible bodies. 
They cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Our present bodies, if they were to stand in the presence of God, would be vaporized in a millisecond. These bodies aren't designed to be um, in the kingdom of God, in heaven, in the presence of God. We need a resurrected body and we must be changed. This corruptible body must be changed to an incorruptible body. It happened with Jesus. It's going to happen with us. And this happens at the rapture. What is the purpose of the rapture? The rapture changes the entire body of Christ. Every Old Testament saint, every every person who died in Christ before the rapture, and those who are here at the rapture, in a moment, it changes every one of their bodies into an incorruptible body, a resurrected body, so that they can then function in the millennial kingdom here on the earth, ruling and reigning with Jesus. That's the purpose of the rapture, is to change us so that we can go into this next uh, kingdom to rule and reign with Jesus. Well, what are we going to look like? By all accounts, we'll look like we do now. I've heard that if we're, we're older, we'll look younger. If we're younger, we'll look older. But we'll look good. We'll recognize one another. But we will be in a resurrected body and we'll be able to do things that we could never do before here on this earth whereby we are ruling and reigning with Jesus. That's the number one reason for the rapture, to change the, change the, the, the body of Christ, the church, the Old Testament saints, the dead who, in Christ who have died before the rapture, and then those who are on, here on the earth when the rapture occurs, to change all of us from a corruptible body into an incorruptible body so that we can rule and reign with Jesus Christ. This is very exciting. And there's so much more that God has in store for us. But the first thing you must do is be born again. Start the new year off by, by confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hey, thanks for watching. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. Every week I talk about something pertaining either to the rapture or to the end times Bible prophecy, or something that is occurring that's pointing towards the soon return of Jesus Christ. So until next time, God bless you. Keep looking up.